It was in the years of 1996 through 1999, I came here to preach several revivals. This was the first Baptist church established in this whole area after the invasion of 1970. They asked me to come preach several revivals for them, so when I got back to Peru in uh, 2001, first Sunday in January 2001, I came here to Sunday school, and the pastor here asked me if I would go work, take over that little work out there um, of the old Paz Baptist Church. That's what I did. It was right here in the year of 2001, January 2001, under the authority of the Emanuel Baptist Church in Murray, Kentucky, that we came to this place right here to start a Baptist church, an independent Baptist church. We had two men with us. The Lord blessed the work here. And we saw many people saved, over 70 people baptized. The Lord truly blessed. And in the year 2008, I left this work and went up to the mountains of Huancayo and left Brother Wilfredo Flores in charge here. And unfortunately, because of some church splits, we had to leave this place and we moved off to what is now the Berea Baptist Church, where God has continued blessing his ministry there. It was in November of 2011 that Brother Wilfredo, after leaving down there, the, the old Paz Baptist Church, various situations that happened, came up here and opened his doors to his garage where he started meeting for the next three and a half years. And all this time praying that God would open doors any place to start worshiping the Lord. This place grew to the point where they had chairs all the way out here every service because there just was no more room inside. But the Lord truly blessed. You know, if there's nothing else you listen to in this video, one thing I want you to know, you can trust the Lord. He will do. He will accomplish His will. Where His will will lead you, His grace will sustain you. While we were meeting over here in Brother Wilfredo's garage, real fast we outgrew the garage. We started off with about 30 people, but just almost overnight it grew to 50. And we didn't have a place to go. We were meeting out in the streets and uh, all the way out in this driveway, like we've previously stated. The sun cook us in the summertime and the rain in the wintertime. It's just horrible. And we began praying, and not just praying, but really on our knees, begging the Lord. Open up a place for us to go. We had no place to go. We started saving money to try to buy land. We got all the way up to $5,000. Boy, we felt rich at that time until we started looking for property. Find a property is $100,000, $150,000, $200,000. It scares us to death. We'll never have that kind of money. Save it. This, it's going to take us 14 lifetimes to get that kind of money. But we prayed. And one day, Brother John Allen, it was in uh, 2012, in July of 2012, Brother John Allen came down with his deacon, Brother Jose Diaz, and Jose Diaz had a friend he was going to bring with him by the name of Orlando Cadiz. And they came down and saw what was going on, and Orlando went back to his place and told his father-in-law, they need property. There's a group of people down there. What I didn't know, after we met Brother Ikega, what the states, and Washington, he lives in Washington, D.C., he told me that for nine years they had been praying what through that property. Everybody wanted the property, they wanted to turn it into a house. But he said, no, the Lord purchased this property, the Lord built this property, it's going to be used for the Lord. And he said, well, there's a group of people that's got the people, they just don't have a building. So uh, on Thanksgiving Day I got a phone call from Brother John Allen telling us he had an offering for us. Well, I'm an independent Baptist and I love offerings. I asked, how much is it? <laughs> he said, it's not money, it's a property. Well. When I heard that kind of tongue-in-cheek, nobody gives property away here. It's, they put strings attached, but that's what he said. He said he's going to contact us on Christmas Day, that the owner would. I asked Brother Wilfredo to come up and join us uh, for Christmas Day, and he did. And uh, we were waiting anxiously, 7 o'clock evening, we got that phone call. It wasn't a phone call, it was a video uh, Skype message. And sure enough, the old man showed up, his elderly preacher, and he told us. Asked me if I, if I was Paul Rose. I said, yes, and this is Wilfredo Freudis. And... He said he investigated us through his son-in-law, and he said that we've been praying for a long time, we want you to have that property. I told him, I said, man, for us to get property, there's papers to sign, there's, it's, it's a long rigmarole, and, uh, and he said that he'd do it. Whatever it took, he's going to give us that property. Well, I told him if he'd do it, I'd go to the States, I'd go to Washington, drive up his driveway, pick him up, bring him to Peru, sign the paperwork, take him back home, and drop him off at his doorstep. He was really excited about it. 
and we did that. Uh, we took him, we came to Peru in 2014, in May of 2014. He signed all the paperwork, gave us the, the property, the building. Now we will admit that we took the building, it was in pretty bad shape in 2012, but Little Bible Way Baptist Church in Houston sent us a, an offering, a pretty sizable, sizable offering. We took $18,000 of that and revamped the whole building. As you can see in this video, the Lord is really good to us. Um, and that's where we're meeting today. Fixed it all up, painted the walls, put a new floor, put a new roof on, and met there. We inaugurated that building on May the 10th of 2014. The, the Lord is truly gracious to us.